Hey there, it's Dr. Guerrero, and I am going to walk you through a review for the Anatomy 260 final exam. Um, unlike the other reviews that I've done for you, um, I've already typed this one out. So instead of, um, because the test is really, really long, instead of going along and trying to organize it as I go ahead and organized it ahead of time. So um, the final exam is only composed, uh, it's not comprehensive, it's only composed of what we've covered since uh, week five. So during five was our midterm. So after that, six, seven, eight, and nine is what's going to be on the final exam, all right? So um, and the best part about this is since we started doing the reviews the way that we have this term, um, if you did the week six quiz review and you did the week seven quiz review, and eight quiz, they're all in this. So you just kind of take that information and put it into this final exam. It kind of feeds off of each other. So that's a really huge benefit. If you've been working all this time, it's definitely going to be beneficial to you. So I put it in the order that we covered it this term. Uh, started with the nervous system. So uh, these are anatomical terms, sulci, fissure, gyrus. Um, if you did the week six review, with me, you have the diagram, or you can go back on uh, the YouTube video, see the diagram that I use there for preganglionic, postganglionic um, fibers or uh, synapse fibers, but the neurons. And this, you need to know the size, like which ones are long, which ones are short, and what neurotransmitters they release and their effectors, so what they impact. You need to be familiar with the anatomy of the spinal cord, uh, not necessarily to visually see it, but to interpret it in words, okay? And uh, the cerebral cortex, which you know that the term cortex means it's the outer few millimeters of a, an organ or a structure. Cerebral tells you it's cerebrum, so that is our brain. Our cerebral cortex is the outer few millimeters of the brain. Be familiar with cerebral spinal fluid. It's um, composition of what it's made of and where you will find it. The meninges, the derm, the retinoid mater, and pia mater, their function and uh, where they are located and how they are attached. Okay. The divisions of the autonomic nervous system, so sympathetic and parasympathetic, you know, fight or flight, rest and digest, anatomy of the brain stem, the pons, the midbrain, the medulla oblongata. Also, uh, it will behoove you or it will be beneficial for you to know what those areas uh, control or what they have control over. The anatomy of the diencephalon, which is atop the brain stem. So that make sure you're familiar with that. And that goes back to week six. The bulk cerebrae, the superior sagittal sinus, the diencephalon. This is that developmental um, aspect of the brain. I included that in the week six. There was a diagram for that as well, so you can go back to the week six video if you want to to look at that diagram there. Um, the innervation, the adrenal medulla. So adrenal medulla is not necessarily the nervous system, but innervation is. So those are the nerves. The adrenal medulla is the endocrine system, and adrenal tells you that it's located on top of the kidney, because renal is kidney. You need to know the anatomy and the function of the facial nerve, the abducens, the ocular rotor nerves, the trochlear nerve, the olfactory nerve, and the anatomy of the thalamus. Okay, and that kind of uh, wraps you back to the diencephalon. And that should cover you for the nervous system material for the final exam. These special senses. Uh, you need to be familiar with the anatomy of the ear, both visually and um, through words. So um, know the terminology and be able to describe it because um, all of your questions are multiple choice, but if it's not a picture, it's going to be um, obviously a multiple choice question that you're going to have to pick the answer for. Um, the inner ear, the middle ear, and I am pretty positive at some point, yeah, the external ear. So Make sure you're just familiar with all of the ear. The oval window, window is part of the ear, the pharyngeum tympanic membrane, 
and then there's a tube to probably add that here. So those are not the same thing, but you can you'll see them. Um, it's not actually it's called the tympanic membrane, which I probably already have somewhere else, and then the pharyngeal tympanic tube. So let me take the membrane part off. There's a tympanic membrane right underneath it. Sorry. The hand, hammer anvil stirrup, those are the small bones in the inner ear. Uh, what part of the brain handles vision? I said, yeah. uh, so here we have some more questions on vision, which is a special sense. Uh, the nerves that are associated with taste. Taste is one of the special senses. The conjunctiva, this is the anatomy of the eye. Conjunctiva is uh, the eye. Lacrimal apparatus is also eye. Tarsal gland is I, palpebrae I, pupil I, ciliary muscle I, levator palpebrae I, medial rectus I. Okay, so be familiar with the uh, special census, components of the special census. The, let me go back to where you can see that. Okay. The endocrine system, which is the next stop. The endocrine, remember, is hormones. All right, so um, there are different questions brought up about the hormones. When you say the zomer zona glomerulosa, this is talking about a specific anatomical spot, but you need to know not only where that's located, but what is what hormones are associated with that, or, or what's that function. The renal cortex, renal medulla, a lot of the word cortex and medulla, so make sure you're familiar with what cortex is, I just mentioned a few moments ago, and the medulla. And if you have questions about these, that was on the week seven review, okay? Uh, zona reticularis, so that's with the glomerulosa. You need to know the anatomy of the pituitary gland and the hormones associated with it. I covered that in heavy detail, the week seven quiz review. Penile gland, testes, ovaries, these are all um, specific hormones associated with it. The adrenal cortex, which is different than the renal cortex. The hypothalamus and epithalamus, the hormones associated. Thyroid gland, thymus, so you know the location and what endocrine function it is associated with. I said kidney hormones. All right. Um, Erythropoiesis, which is also abbreviated EPO you know where that's manufactured and what its impact is. The pancreas, you need to know the pancreas's endocrine function at this point. Um, there's cells that are associated, so the alpha and the beta cells and the hormones that are associated with those. You need to know about oxytocin, a hormone and its target organs. The parathyroid glands and parathyroid hormone. Epinephrine, norepinephrine. Cortisol, thyroid stimulating hormone, the target organs for the pituitary hormones. Okay, um, so this kind of goes back up to the anatomy of the pituitary and hormones associated. So, of those hormones, what are their target organs? Melanocyte stimulating hormone, melanin, prolactin inhibiting hormone, ADH, which is anti diuretic hormone. Let's put this out there. Uh, luteinizing hormone, glucagon, adrenaline, and noradrenaline, which are very similar to epinephrine and norepinephrine. Still on week seven is uh, the respiration, uh, respiratory system. So uh, this is mostly anatomy, but epiglottis, lingual tonsil, and I came back in and put a diagram. Um, I also included that in seven review, but I have it here. The uvula, uh, vestibular fold, the middle nasal conch, posterior nasal aperture, the soft palate, the hard palate, the medial, middle nasal medius, sorry, thyroid cartilage, vestibule, vocal folds, type one and type two cells. Yeah. The alveolar macrophages, the pleural cavity, which is the member surrounds, um, be familiar with the serous membrane that surrounds each of those lungs. 
surfactant, which is produced by one of those type of type one or type two cells. This pleural cavity, here's the pleural membrane. Okay, um, diaphragm, what happens when the diaphragm relaxes versus when that diaphragm contracts? And again, if you did the week seven review, you have a lot of this. All right, so I'm gonna put that where you can see all of that together. All right, and this brings us into week eight. Now, um, going through your final exam, it is super heavy on the cardiovascular system. If you do the week eight review, you also see that there's quite a bit of cardiovascular. So um, I'm just gonna start, I just went through and listed everything you need to be familiar with cardiovascular wise. The vertebral artery, axillary artery, femoral artery, brachial, inferior mesenteric artery, renal, common carotid, the celiac trunk, radial artery, subclavian artery, the aortic arch. This is getting us into the anatomy of the heart, the right and left ventricle. All the coronary arteries, and coronary tells you it's on the heart. Okay, superior and inferior vena cava, the brachiocephalic trunk, and that term right there, if you dissect it correctly, it tells you exactly where it's located, brachiocephalic. The difference in the location of the pulmonary arteries and veins, the left common carotid, ascending aorta, and the aorta um, is one big vessel, but we call it different things based on its location. Um, you need to know about the circulation in utero. So while a baby's inside the mother, it doesn't have to have its lungs inflated because it's not breathing on its own. It's using its lungs. So the pulmonary circulation is bypassed, familiar with how that's possible in utero. And blood conditions, anemia, leukemia, thrombocytopenia, polysemia. This is a structure on heart, the coronary sinus. Coronary tells me it's heart. You need to know the difference, the uh, characteristics when you compare a man and female versus blood volume, hematocrit levels, and blood pressure. And these are textbook numbers. That means that this is average what we can expect. But again, if a female is much bigger than a male, then those numbers may be skewed. But these are just textbook. You need to know the circulation of blood flow through the body. And if you did the week eight review, I put a diagram on there to help with that. Um, systemic and pulmonary circulation. Um, you need to be familiar with the different aspects of uh, blood, so the different types of cells, thrombocytes, which are platelets, leukocytes, which are white blood cells, lymphocytes, which are a type of leukocyte or white blood cell, and there are two types of lymphocytes, and then erythrocytes, which are red blood cells. The chordae tendinae, which is found inside the heart, the atrioventricular valves, heart anatomy, sinilunar valves, heart anatomy, pectinate muscle, heart anatomy, trabeculae carne, heart anatomy, the formed elements of the blood, so red, red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets. I also mentioned those just a moment ago. The three layers of the heart, so the epicardium, myocardium, endocardium. On the abdominal aorta, so still the aorta, just the separately reference as abdominal, what are branch off from that. The anatomy of the cardium, okay, um, so being familiar with that serous membrane. You need to know the characteristics of erythrocytes, leukocytes. The endothelial lining, this is inside of the heart and the blood vessels, and be familiar with its anatomy and why it is designed the way it is. The Plasma globulins. These are going to be the components that we find in the, the protein, plasma proteins we find in the plasma. Be familiar with those. Systole, diastole, the foramen oval, and a fossa ovalis. <laughs> Again, all of those are on week eight. But I also included these diagrams because there's quite a few um, anatomical aspects on this. Final, or yes, final exam that you need to be familiar with. So I have the different views of the heart, and I have it labeled for you to study. Okay, posterior view. 
I also have the blood vessels. This is anterior view. And oh, these are arteries also. And these are veins. The next section is lymphatics and immunity. Um, you have, so, so this is also week eight. But this is a little bit more detailed than what week eight went in. So the right and la left lymphatic ducts. Um, in the week eight review, I put a diagram there so you could see which area each one of those serves. On the leukocytes, the breakdown, the monocytes, the lymphocytes, the basophils, the sinophils, neutrophils, be familiar with those. Um, and I also kind of mentioned those in the cardiovascular system as well. Malt tissue, so malt is mucosa associated lymphoid tissue. Um, know what that is and where you can find it. Tonsils, know the different types of tonsils and their location. This will take us back into week eight, um, which white blood cells will turn into macrophages and which white blood cells will produce antibodies and also be familiar with the organs of the lymphatic system. And I said this in week eight, but just to review that, um, some of those organs may also just be glands. So it may not say organ, it may say gland. system, the digestive system as far as anatomy is concerned, not physiology, but anatomy. Urinary system, we're looking at kidneys, the ureters or ureters, and the urinary bladder. And for the reproductive system, um, it's heavy female on this test, but you also need to be familiar with the anatomy of the male reproductive system. So I'll have diagrams here in just a second, I'll show you. But the ovary, the clitoris, the round ligament, brown ligament, labia minora and majora, the urinary bladder, which is in the diagram, but um, is technically part of the urinary system, the uterus, the vagina, the uterus tubes, which are also called fallopian tubes, which are also called the oviducts, the anus, the urethra, and the fornix. And so I went and got these diagrams to help with the anatomy so the male reproductive system and the female reproductive system. There are questions on your final exam about labeling. So I wanted to make sure you had diagrams to reference. Okay. That is your final exam review. Um, kind of give you some highlights on what to, to look for and how to study. And again, if you've been studying week six, seven, eight, uh, you've got a solid base for the final exam. So um, just, just a few more tweak, tweaks have to be done. And there's more diagrams on these tests uh, on the final exam that are not present on the weekly quizzes. So that's again why I included more pictures. But I put all of these review videos on YouTube and I'm going to of course share that link with you and you can have access to them. So you're not scrolling through the course looking for them. All right. Um, Please don't hesitate to reach out to me if you have questions and happy studying.